Ladies and gentlemen, how many times have I told you about the factual background portion of the Sussman indictment? Michael Sussman's defense team tried to kick that out of court. The judge denied their request. The factual background of the Michael Sussman indictment essentially states everything that Trump um, and Devin Nunes and everyone else has told you that they set up and framed an incoming candidate not only with opposition research, but with opposition research obtained, purchased by his direct political rivals and then filtered through the United States government. Now, 18 U.S. Code 371 is the legal statute. I wrote about that in The Federalist years back. You can type in H.A. Goodman Federalist, and you can see one of the articles I wrote. It was Comey and McCabe should be charged for conspiring to defraud Americans. They knew what they were doing. They knew that there was no reason to investigate Trump, but they did anyway. They just needed a pretext. They just needed information in this case, obtained by Clinton and the DNC to begin these these sprawling, you know, never-ending investigations into ghosts and fantasies. They couldn't accept defeat. So what they did is they said, well, Trump was in a Moscow hotel room as they, you know, feign indignation with Madison Cawthorn's latest comments, but but Trump in a Moscow hotel room, no problem. But a new update, Cash Patel uh, is interviewed today, I believe it's today, by Lee Smith. And within the interview, I believe Cash Patel is going to talk about, or is talking about Jake Sullivan. I've also addressed Jake Sullivan. Jake Sullivan has a link not only directly to Madam Secretary because he worked for her campaign and he worked for her, but also our president now, Biden, and his son Hunter. The link is that in 2013, he was working under Joe Biden, okay? Um, He was working within, as a top staff member of of the vice president and he he knew he knew all the different um trips to various countries that the vice president's son took he knew the arrangements but then he said of course he didn't know he also spread the alpha bank nonsense so that that's that's an issue with so he worked for the clinton campaign spreading the Alpha Bank nonsense, completely debunked, completely, you know, a story that made no sense at all. The same thing as the Steele dossier. So Jake Sullivan is the National Security Advisor of the United States of America, helping spread the same complete nonsense that Michael Sussman uh, and tech people that were hired, or no, Michael Sussman, hired by the Clinton campaign, tried to spread within the United States government. The reason Sussman was indicted is because he lied to, he allegedly lied to James Baker of the FBI. So there's three indictments. There's the Ke- Kevin Kleinsmith, who was a government official, Kevin Kleinsmith, government official. Igor Danchenko, steel subsource. Sussman, a, an attorney working for the same law firm that helped purchase the steel dossier. By the way, hit subscribe to this channel right now. We're almost at 196,000 subs, people. Tell your friends about this channel. Tell your friends about this channel. If you want to support my work to my new Patreons, thank you so very much. To my new Patreons, I cannot thank you enough. 
My Patreon link is below in the pinned comment. But ladies and gentlemen, Sussman was paid by Trump's direct political rival to give information, to obtain non-public data. And Cash Patel believes that, according to his interview with Lee Smith, from what I understand, that there's going to be indictments, um, more indictments, either April this month or May. And I, I think that will coincide directly. I think that Trump leveled his lawsuit at 40-plus people because, because he knew that there are going to be more indictments. Each indictment bolsters his lawsuit. They say that his lawsuit's going to be thrown out. Well, it won't be thrown out. Or if it's thrown out, he'll, he'll file another lawsuit. All of those people are going to have to contend with a billionaire that they try to undermine and basically send to jail or prison simply because of opposition research and lies and deceit that his direct political rivals try to um, uh, spread within the United States government. What they did, what Sussman did, was obtain non-public data, basically surveillance of an incoming president, of a president that was already in office. Because the, the, when they say, well, the data was... The data was obtained uh, during President Obama's administration. This is, of course, a lie by omission. The Sussman data was not only obtained during President Obama's administration. Furthermore, the tech executive did not have an, a, a, the tech executive or the tech people involved at Georgia Tech or other universities did not have a contract with President Obama's administration that said that they could obtain information on an incoming president. So if there was a contract between an outgoing administration and people utilize their work agreement to obtain non-public information on a sitting president of a new administration, that's not part of the deal. And so it was up until February 2017... In February 2017, we had a new occupant in the Oval Office. It was Donald J. Trump. So they were going. They were. They were engaged in surveillance of an of of a president. Not only his health care provider, his his apartment, Trump Tower, also the executive office of the president. And you have Jake Sullivan as the link, working for two campaigns. You also have uh, uh, the uh, the law firm as a link working for two campaigns, the Clinton campaign and President Mashed Potato Brains. You have numerous people within that within the Democratic sphere of influence trying to working to promulgate lies about Trump, and they were very successful. Media. First of all, could you imagine BuzzFeed publishing any of the emails associated with Hunt, like that Hunter wrote? I mean, the New York Post did, and Twitter then suspended the New York Post. Twitter never suspended BuzzFeed for a dossier that had no, no truth at all. Zero truth. And then what, what BuzzFeed is, well, the government's using it. But that doesn't make it true. <laughs> the, the BuzzFeed got out of... Major lawsuits because they said, well, it was a government investigation. And the judge said, well, you know what? It was complete. There were complete lies. And it was um, libelous and all that. But it was a government investigation. So then you have liberal publications utilizing absolute lies, deceitful statements, things that were untrue, libelous claims. But because the government adopted or latched onto it, therefore there's just some semblance of credibility, at least from a legal sense. But Twitter, Facebook, every social media algorithm, right before people went to the polls, said, no, 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 you can't, you can't look at Hunter's emails because of Russia, Russia. And now we're finding out Clapper and everybody lied, as always. <laughs> Intel lied again. 
But there are going to be more indictments within the next couple of months. It'll coincide with the Trump lawsuit. It'll make it more difficult for that Trump lawsuit to be thrown out of court. If you, if you have a whole bunch more indictments within the Trump lawsuit, I mean, you have, if you have more indictments, Cash Patel uh, with Lee Smith interview, uh, if you have more indictments and within the Durham probe, and all of those 40 plus people and corporations say, oh, well, you know what? Throw this, throw this, James Comey included, uh, McCabe, Strzok, all of these people. Oh, throw this lawsuit out that Trump is leveling against us. It's totally unwarranted. Well, if you keep on, if you keep on seeing before that time when the judge looks at that lawsuit to throw out the case, if you keep on seeing indictments within the Durham Probe special counsel, then <laughs> that boast, bolsters every claim. All of those indictments will have factual backgrounds. And all of those people will try to throw out the factual background like Sussman and not be able to. The factual background is exactly, is exactly what we've been talking about, what I wrote, wrote about in The Federalist, what everyone's talking about. The factual background says, yeah, his direct political rivals spread lies and deceitful statements within government, and government officials utilize that to investigate Trump. You can't, you can't do that. They are not, we can't even investigate them yet. Trump Republicans will take over the House and Senate. We can't even investigate them based on the actual emails. Okay, You can investigate a whole bunch of people on the Democratic side based on their emails. Hit subscribe to this channel right now. Be here in a couple of hours. I'm going to talk about how they're going to try to use 18 U.S. Code 371 against Trump. That'll be somewhat of a serious... There won't be there won't be any sarcasm there, but there'll be somewhat of a serious discussion. So check out my segment prior to this one. The sarcasm is you know the satire is there. Uh, I pretend to be this you know morally wonderful, wonderful morally superior liberal Democrat who believes that Trump any any crime that takes place on planet Earth is Trump's fault. But in this case, they're trying to actually go after Trump, utilizing a legal statute that's so broad, it could easily and should be utilized against everyone who set him up and framed him, okay? The worst thing you could say about Trump is that he acted like a politician. That's not what, that's not what his political rivals did. They purchased lies, spread those lies within the U.S. government to get, in, to get, the, to get the government to investigate an incoming president. That is not a peaceful transition of power. That is far more egregious than anything Trump ever did. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe to this channel.